Hello and welcome to episode 80 of Popcorn and Prosecco, a show that's all about talking about movies and our first show that's going to be an audio only show. We are going to try a new thing for a little while and just focus on audio instead of the video and see how it goes. If you feel like leaving feedback about that, we'd love to hear your thoughts, so please do in the comments section. So I am Perry Nemiroff and here are my co-hosts, Christy Prochko and Angie Hahn. Hi. Hey, everybody. Just one note, we are going to continue to post the audio onto YouTube. So if that's how you're enjoying the podcast, you can continue to do so. You just won't have the video component. You won't see our pretty faces, which right now, because we weren't planning on video, are not so pretty. So you're not missing out on anything, I promise. Nope. I am full on Nicki Minaj (laughs) tonight because no one sees this. They can't prove I'm not. So this episode is going to be our summer wrap-up episode, and we are dividing it between a winner-loser discussion with things like superhero movies, you know, big nostalgia movies like Jurassic World and how that did. So we're going to jump into it first with the superhero movies, and Angie's going to take that. All right. So surprisingly, one of the big losers this summer was superhero movies. Okay, so to be fair, Avengers Age of Ultron still did great money. Great money. Ant-Man, I think, turned out better than many people expected. But considering how much of our recent cinema has been, or mainstream, you know, blockbuster cinema has been dominated by superhero movies, it was kind of surprising this year to see that they didn't make as much of an impression as anyone, I think, really expected. Like Avengers The Age of Ultron, it still made a lot of money, but, you know, the fans didn't really seem to like it that much. Like the press tour was a shit show. Joss Whedon basically came as close as he could to saying, I fucking hated that experience without actually saying that because then he'd get in trouble. Yeah, he uh, yeah. almost apologized regularly for the whole movie, which was Yeah, weird. and, like, Ant-Man was a movie that, like, it was okay. It was a modest hit for them. I think it was maybe one of their lowest, if, if not their actual lowest uh, grossing movie. And I felt like the reviews were mostly, oh, that wasn't as bad as it could have been. And then, of course, you, you guys all remember Fantastic Four, because that was very recent. No one remembers just... Fantastic Four already. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the problem is Fantastic Four has already been forgotten. You know, it's crazy, though, because like last summer, like these movies still made a shit ton of money. Like Avengers Age of Ultron Not made Fantastic Four, but the other one. No, that's true. Avengers made of Age of Ultron made one point four billion. And that's a lot. But like last summer, uh, C- Captain America, Winter Soldier and Guardians of the Galaxy weren't just like didn't just do blockbuster business they were like all we were talking about they were dominating there was like they were causing memes dancing group became a thing there were breakout stars like you know superhero movies and marvel in particular dominated last summer I and this like, summer i think that people are too smart like i think that one of the problems with having so many superhero movies is that people are really into it and they're coming at such a quick rate at this point that people are get, you know people want quality movies and mm-hmm. i mean look at the three movies we got this year compared to especially last year where they were insanely they were good mo- those are good and movies and so different they felt so completely different from other movies we had seen I, you know what i'm kind of betting that it's kind of almost a natural lull that needs to happen like like a cycle within marvel almost where they pour so much time into the story here oh, and they're like so oh it's time it's to try something it's uh, it's time to try something different and it just didn't work but like i don't think next they did try year something they're different i think I, yeah i think ultra man did, did. ultra well, was yeah. Ultron oh, was, Ultron's problem was that it it was it was a movie that's in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, so it had to like it had to connect what? to every other movie, and it it just oh god, the whole thing was a shit show. It was a mess. Well, yeah. my prediction is that this is a cycle. This was the lazy slash let's try something different year, and next yeah, I year I think we're gonna be like back on point again. Mm. Yeah, I mean, next year's slate looks promising. Like, I'm not, I'm not like, you know, like saying, oh, this is the end of superhero movies. Not at all. I just think it's, you know, I feel like superhero movies lately have, have been as close to a sure bet as you can get in, you know, in the movies, especially the Marvel movies. Like, you know, each one, for a while there, it seemed like every single Marvel movie that came out, people were like, this is the best one yet. This one made the most money yet. So then it was interesting to see. This totally. summer, as you said, it was a kind of a lull. I'm not well, saying, you know, I make no predictions about what it's going to be like next year. That's a whole other conversation. Now, maybe this you... show, maybe this shows that the bubble is capable of bursting, and I mean, maybe this is, is the, and maybe this is the way it will burst at some point. You know, uh, if the, I kind if, of okay, if this fucking bubble burst level. before we get a real female superhero movie, I'm going to lose my mind. Well, well that's, that's not that's, that's already not possible the considering they have everything set through like 2020. Mm. 
That is true. So out of curiosity, and don't if you know, don't answer, but how much do you think Fantastic Four has made both domestically and worldwide? What are your guesses? A hundred million? Is that for domestic or worldwide? I, don't, I've, I actually honestly have no clue. Don't even, don't even quote me on that. I, I just threw out the first number that came into my head. Let's um, go domestic. We'll just guess domestic. Um, we'll say Angie's is 100 million. Price oh and no. right rules. Price is right rules. Angie, if you want to change your thing, because I changed the rules halfway through, you're allowed. No, it's okay. I'll go with that um, one. I would say 60. Okay. I just want to point out to people listening at home the correct answer in this scenario should have been one, just because then you covered the gamut. Uh, domestically, <laughs> okay. I'm so saying, now we're detouring, so she can critique our strategy. Guys, I watched a lot of prices right going up. Um, so, so domestically, right now, uh, Fantastic Four has made fifty two point six million. Huh. Wow. That's it. Does That's- that include this weekend? Because yeah. I could be right if you add the, okay, then I'm not right. <laughs> it's opening weekend was 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 more than half that. Opening weekend was 25. Ugh. Yeah. I feel like the I feel like the thing about you know if we're talking about the overall general trend in superhero movies, it kind of feel like feels like what happened this year is first of all, Avengers: Age of Ultron to me. Oh, sorry, should we just wrap? No, no, no. You could finish <laughs> your thought. You got oh, so okay. scared. No, no, no. I can keep talk. I can keep talking about this for like the rest of the chat. So we'll just cut it off here, and then we can just move on. I, I didn't mean to like cut off your thought. Yeah, I I think it's, no because I, the thing that I was gonna start was gonna be a whole long conversation. So we'll okay, stop it <laughs> well maybe we'll we'll probably come back to that because there's a million goddamn superhero movies yet to come. Um, but what? Yeah. So what's crazy is that we were talking about how like you know superhero movies didn't do that well this summer, and to prove just how not well they've done, a big winner this summer is Universal. Universal Studios has actually made more money than Fox, Paramount, Sony, and Lionsgate combined, and they had no superhero movie. Um, But what they did have working in their favor was Trainwreck, Furious 7, Pitch Perfect 2, Jurassic World, Minions, Straight Outta Compton. They also had Ted 2, but Ted 2 didn't do great. Ted 2 did fine, but no one's talking about it. Uh, But like, yeah, Trainwreck made $128 million worldwide. Fast and Furious is always just a boatload of money. That's $1.5 billion. Pitch Perfect 2, which is another female-fronted comedy, did $238 million. Like, this is outstanding. Jurassic World, of course. Jurassic World is like a whole other thing. That did so well. Can I talk about that for one second? Yeah. Furious 7, I I believe, set the record for the movie to hit $1 billion the fastest until Jurassic World came along a few weeks later and then beat that record. So that is how well Universal is doing right now. And since then, Minions has also hit $1 billion. Mm Mm-hmm. So, like, they've been tearing it up. And I think it's really interesting because if you look at their slate, you know, they're, these, there's, there's... Oh, and Straight Outta Compton did better than expected. Sorry. Yeah, never, Straight like, Outta Compton did way better than expected. Know. What's interesting is, like, this is a very diverse slate. Like, yeah, you have Jurassic World, which is... None of us were super big on. And, like, yes, it's playing really hardcore to a fan base that already exists. But, like, Trainwreck was a risk for them. Pitch Perfect 2 was a movie that people expected to do well. But I don't think this well. This did really well. Um, wow. You know, this, and, like, this year, Universal crushed it compared to last year. Like, if you were wondering, I, I'm not sure if this is right. Because, like, uh, the box office mojo page isn't working quite right. But... Neighbors was their highest grossing movie last year with 150 domestically. Wow. Really? Wow. wow. I mean, if this is cr- I, I one, of the, one of their search features isn't working, so I altered sure. the URL myself, so I might have screwed it up admittedly. But it said number one was Neighbors, then Ride Along, then Lucy. Wow. Oh. Yeah, but I mean, as is that domestic or international? These are domestic grosses. Okay, as I was going to say, because I remember Lucy did super well overseas, too. Um, yeah, it's crazy. And I mean, the thing is, though, I think Universal this year took some chances. They had some safe bets with Jurassic World. But then, like, they... And Minions. Sw- and Minions, yeah. Minions was, like, a totally safe bet. Uh, but, like, then they did something, like, Straight out of Compton, which was a movie that was, like, getting not great press for a while because it was having a lot of production problems. And they really backed it. And, like, Trainwreck, I think Trainwreck, they were smart in that they, pit- they jumped onto Amy Schumer at a time when it was good to jump on her. 
I made that seem weirdly sexual. Uh, <laughs> I was just but like she, that, but I she thought would Amy probably Schumer would be fine that. with that. Yeah, yeah really. probably. But like this was kind of the year of Amy Schumer, which is awesome because like I've been watching Inside Amy Schumer for a couple of years now. But it seems like this was the year a lot of people who had never heard of the show were like finding out about her in season three, and like she was handling trolls with a plum, the twelve angry men inside Amy Schumer, and it was like all of that played such a great lead up. And then they showed Train Wreck, Train Wreck at South by Southwest, where it was getting huge reviews. And then they finally opened and it just, it it made crazy business. And she handled those junkets like a pro, like even when people said really shitty things to her, like it just really sold. And then she just had the coolest summer ever on a random tangent where she became friends with Jennifer Lawrence and just gets to be everything to everyone. Um, But but I mean, as you said, it's, it's a really diverse lady. And, you know, I do mean that in terms of like, you know, gender and race but also just in that they're all really different movies like I feel like I feel like so many studios during the summer they bank on you know things that are they bank on superhero movies and things that might as well be superhero movies basically so it was really interesting to see them come out with like oh yeah we've got a musical we've got a musical biopic you know we've got like a comedy it's like not just you know the big action movies that we associate with summer and it's and it has worked out great for them what did Universal bring to Comic-Con this year do you guys happen to remember? I don't remember. At I was all. just like, tr- I'm just trying to figure out what like the trajectory. were they there? Yeah, which is like a funny thing, you know, like the most successful studio of the I don't year. Know if they were like, didn't there. even have a presence at like that event that's supposed to kind of like set the tone for so many months to come. I love that. Like they basically, it's crazy oh, because cri- Universal it was Crimson Peak. It was the legendary stuff, right? Uh, that was theirs, right? So they were really building for fall because it was Crimson Peak, and something was with Crimson Peak, but nothing that had opened yet. Hey, you know, maybe that's the way to do it. You I, know, I, no you, complaints, use, man. Use Comic Con to have an even stronger fall rather than you know putting all your marketing money into well because we're going to come summer, way down the line. And I'm going to forget the studio off the top of my head. I'm going to look it up while we're talking. But last summer, uh, The Rock's Hercules did a thing at Comic-Con Paramount. And, like, that didn't help it at all. That no. that movie just couldn't get yeah, anybody to pay attention. Yeah, but actually, didn't that movie come out, like, right during Comic-Con? Yeah, it was really strange where they were like... I feel like nothing that comes out the weekend of Comic-Con ever does that well. I yeah, like it was a, if, it was a weird selling it, Except if for selling Minions it, uh, this year, actually. Because Minions was for a different crowd. If you're selling it, if you're selling it at Comic Con right before it comes out, then it's really too late to build that build that much on buzz. Honestly, mm-hmm. like for example, Man from Uncle was there for Warner Brothers this year, but it was mostly because you know they already had Henry Cavill there. And right. wasn't well, wasn't yeah. a thing that like none of them were interested in talking about it anyway. It probably wasn't such a great. I remember seeing all the photos and they all look so bored, which is probably honestly just them being tired because Comic Con, yeah, is exhausting. I know I apologized to most of the people I interviewed for being tired, and they were like, "It's cool, I haven't slept." And I was like, "Okay." Some pe- some some people are better at the Comic Con panel than the others. The other thing is, you know, maybe <laughs> Jesse Universal Eisenberg. Was- Maybe yeah. Universal was smart not to be there because looking at their slate, like, for summer, they're not things that would necessarily, with the exception of, like, Jurassic World, they're not things that would play that well to a Comic-Con audience. And it's a waste yeah. of your time and money to go to Comic-Con if you're not going to cater to that specific and it's, audience. it's funny because who knows how much money certain studios are spending on their superhero movies that are coming up, yet Universal didn't, didn't they not even bring Jurassic World to Comic-Con last year except to hand out some oh, posters? And look at so. how much money this movie, may, you know, maybe we should, I mean, unless nobody wants to go to Comic-Con anymore, maybe we should stop bashing the usefulness of Comic-Con. No, I, 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 I like had an I amazing a, time and I think I all of the fun. things I covered will be super popular forever. Okay. Comic Con is a great buzz builder, and it did a lot of great things this year. For example, for Deadpool and for Suicide Squad, I'm not knocking. That's it. true. Saying, no, though, that's that totally it's a true. Great, you have to know the audience, and you have to be bringing something that the audience is actually going to be excited about. Otherwise, it's a waste of everyone's time. That's yeah, that I think you're show. right. Universal played well to that because by bringing Crimson Peak, you bring Guillermo del Toro, who like he's the king of Comic Con. Yeah, yeah, he's really. outstanding. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to move on to our third section, which is a section that has both winners and losers in it, and we're calling this the nostalgia section. So first off, let's talk a little bit about the losers, and I mean, clearly a loser is Terminator Genesis, because one, it sucked, and two, it made $155 million. No, that was its budget. That was its budget. Jeez. Yeah, eighty nine million domestic and three fifty two worldwide. Ooh. Man from Uncle made oh, 
I can't believe I haven't looked at that number. Man from Uncle has only made twenty nine million to date. Christy, is that worldwide or domestic? What the fuck? Let me have a double check. Actually, I meant to make notes. Oh of- my god! I know, and you know the it's 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 not necessarily a reflection of these being bad movies. Like Man I from loved Uncle's- Man from Uncle. That's true. Perry's in the trailer for that. I, I loved about Man from Uncle. It uh, shows how much my poll quote is. Worth. You know what? It's Jesus. been updated since. Since I made these notes a day ago, it is now that's thirty four million domestic. Well, Worldwide, it's seventy million. Oi, vey. Oh. Yeah, All and right. for the record, the the uh, the budget they're copping to is seventy five million, which oh. I think is bullshit. I, I think, think that, it's bullshit too. The, yeah, yeah. The third more one than we that. have in this section is Poltergeist, another one that I loved and didn't yeah. do too well. That one has ninety five million worldwide, thirty five million uh, oh, thirty five million budget. Uh, it was. It was considered a flop that killed it, really. Yeah, I'm learning I mean, so many things saying. from your notes. Jesus, I remember. Um, I remember what there was. What they were talking about was the story that I had heard was the fact that the Poltergeist marketing so prominently featured a clown, which, by the way, isn't even a big part of the movie. No. But you know, I marketing know. counts for a big thing, and made them nervous about making Oi, it because it was going to have a clown. It's a dumb. We don't reason. know that that's true, but that was the narrative that was built the up. Most there were also reason other ever. reasons. Like, I'm sure that's not the only reason, but it is, I don't think it helped. I'm also very curious to know how much Poltergeist made on VOD and DVD, because I think horror movies in general, especially especially something like that, would probably make up a good amount of money right there. I don't think anyone remembers that movie came out. No, that movie, that was a shame, because I remember, I liked Poltergeist a lot. Like, I genuinely thought it was, yeah, it was fun, it was inventive, and like, I was surprised that it it just kind of seemed to come and go like people didn't after that weekend no one was talking about it yeah can, can we talk about can we run down the winners real quick and then we can talk yeah about yeah together? let's do that so so the winners obviously are and in the nostalgia section remember that jurassic world like oh, 1.6 billion worldwide jesus mission and they impossible haven't even done the re-release yet yeah yeah mission impossible rogue nation is absolutely killing it it currently has 442 million worldwide and then there's straight out of compton which has 119 million and growing so those are some pretty solid winners right there and i can't i don't know if i love jurassic world so much but it was fun to watch but like the other two are great great movies which is like another plus that great movies are making a lot of money I like that they're good movies and they're making a lot of money, but it's really interesting because I feel like so much of what studio when studios plan things now is based on oh we need like a familiar name to like mm-hmm. mark it off of like it's you know like you'll see over and over and over where they'll come out with a movie that didn't really need to be named after anything. Man from Uncle's a good example like that you could have just had a spy movie set in the sixties. It didn't need to be named Man from Uncle, but I think that maybe sometimes they put more weight in the nostalgia factor than it really warrants because as we've seen. There are movies, like, people like Man from Uncle back in the 60s, and yeah. people like Terminator, and people like Poltergeist, but you, they have to be, if you're going to try to bank off of that, it has to be something that people actually want to see a movie about today. Well, also, Man from Uncle tried to play to teenagers, because they made a PG-13 movie called Man from Uncle, and it was like, none of those kids knew that was a movie to begin, like, knew that was a thing to begin with. Like, my parents were like, oh, I remember that Man from Uncle was a thing, and I was, like, quizzing my mom on it, mostly because I was like, what are you, like, I've never watched the show, and I don't intend to, so tell me things, and I did laugh because she said, I didn't watch it much, but one thing I did like was, she said that, she said she thought the American guy was supposed to be the guy you have a crush on, she goes, but I always thought the Russian had mystique, and I was like, agreed, mom, based on the movie, (laughs) agreed. So I guess they got I that right. I don't even think half the people involved in the movie even, like, considered the fact that it was based on a TV show. And I, it's, it, it was a bizarre no choice. It I mean, just did, it didn't, other than the name of the movie, it didn't really seem like a priority to, you movies, know, even release a featurette. Like, oh, running down, you know, the old shows and highlight moments. You would think you would think they would do something like that, but they didn't really pay well, much attention beyond to it. Well, nostalgia for the show, like, the movie has a nostalgia for 1960s movies. Like, it reminded me a lot of Audrey Hepburn stuff from the 60s. But again, like, I didn't feel like it played with that in a way that seemed engaging to people. I, 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 don't know. I don't know that, I mean, I feel like there was a movie there that could work, but I, I actually think that the title Man from Uncle maybe ended up being more of a liability than a benefit, because first of all, the people that they were targeting, uh, which is most people that are alive right now, uh, don't <laughs> remember that show existed. I feel like a great many people 
had literally had no idea that it was based on an existing IP. Oh, yeah, uh, and if you don't know that, then what the fuck does Man from Uncle mean? Exactly. So then I think a lot of people just saw that title, saw, saw that it was like some random, like they're just like, I, I don't know. It, it looks like a spy thing. It has something to do with uncles. I have no idea. <laughs> You know what really made me mad about that? You don't find out what the fuck uncle is until the last scene, and then it's, like, through post-title, like, and it sizzle didn't reel. And it there. There was no reason that movie needed to be called Man From Uncle. But the other thing that I want to point out when we look over our winners and losers is that, uh, you know, Terminator Genesis is an 80s thing. Poltergeist is an 80s thing. Man From Uncle is from even before that. But the things that did well were Minions, yeah. Mission Impossible, and Straight Outta Compton, which are all 90s things. I'm not sure if Mission Impossible was actually 1990s or, like, early 2000s, but it's, like, in that range. I think it was 90s. I think so. Uh, I, I don't think remember. it was. I think it was. Uh, I remember. Okay, I remember. I had it on VHS, but like at that point, where like I probably ninety six. Okay, yeah. So yeah. they're all solidly nineties things. So I feel like we. I feel like yeah, maybe but it's the, also it's also a nineties thing that's carried over into the two thousands. Like it was pretty fresh on everybody's mind, especially oh, absolutely, especially yeah. this movie probably got a big bump from the fact that Ghost Protocol was the shit. Oh, yeah, no, I absolutely agree, but I'm saying that Terminator Genesis and Poltergeist kind of did not speak strongly to the power at the box office of 80s nostalgia. That was more my mm. point. Yeah, I think that's and fair. And whereas Jurassic World and Strata Compton were very, like, those are two things that people really associate which, with the 90s. Which I guess would be a weird thing for some studios to consider who are still busy churning out, you know, more Friday the 13th and Halloweens and... I mean, there's a lot of money put, being put into that kind of 80s nostalgia right now. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. It's like one of those things where it's like, I don't mind nostalgia when I feel like you're paying tribute to it in the right way, but how to do that is kind of the mystery, you know? Because, like, I think what we're seeing in the films that were successful in this is they understood what people wanted to see. And I know in our Straight Outta Compton episode, we, we criticized a lot of the things Straight Outta Compton left out. But to their credit, they clearly know what their audience want. They knew how to play to that. And, you know, ugh. Jurassic World bums like, me out just because that also, movie. I mean, like, Poltergeist was a movie that I remember basically everyone I know who actually was, like, had lingering affection for the original movie was, like, pissed off that there was a remake. You know, like, Jurassic World, people were like, oh, that's fun. I want to see more dinosaurs. Poltergeist people were like, fuck that. Like, you leave that <laughs> classic alone. <laughs> yeah. Horror fans seem to get really angry about remakes in a way I don't think a lot of other genres get quite as riled about. But I think Which that's is also weird because, like, as a horror fan, I have the exact opposite reaction. It's like, I get so excited about all the remakes, and then I'm like, oh, I'm embarrassed that I'm excited about it, you know? I just generally feel like they took something that used to scare me as a kid and made it not scary. But it's I, I also am aware that a lot of the time it's not fair because when I was a child, I was really having a hard time understanding, you know, fiction and reality. So watching that stuff, you know, it affects you in a different way. But that's what I liked about this Poltergeist. I found this Poltergeist movie genuinely scary. And in a way that the original really didn't because the original felt kind of hokey to me. Like it was gross and it was weird and spooky, but like... This one actually made me, like, a fucking tree rips a child out of his room and, like, throws him around. Like, that was upsetting. I agree, right. but I also think that this just turned into a Poltergeist review, which yeah. Yeah. Good. So, we so you guys we'll, can go we'll back wrap and up by episode. saying that Man from Uncle and Poltergeist shouldn't have been losers, so go check those out if you have some free time. But, like, everything else that we like are winners, so yay. And with that, that's a wrap on episode 80 of Popcorn and Prosecco. Uh, you can catch the audio of this podcast now on iTunes, where we would love for you to subscribe to the podcast and rate and comment over there. You can also catch us on our website, popcornprosecco.com. We are on Twitter, at Popcorn Prosecco. Please like us on Facebook. And you can also still catch us on our YouTube channel and just listen to the audio portion of the podcast. We'll put a pretty picture up there for you. And then all three of us are all over the internet as well. Christy, do you want to take it first? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Christy Puchko. And I write all over the web, so you can find my career highlights on decadentcriminals.com. And for your ease, all that stuff will be below in the comments section or the info section, depending on if you're on iTunes or YouTube. Angie? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at AJHAN, and I write for slashfilm.com. And you can catch my writing on Collider.com, and my Twitter handle is P. Nemiroff. So thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. It